Hello, this is Chris again here with WatchMojo.com. Now, today I thought it would be important if we actually looked back a little bit into the past. Now, when the Sega Dreamcast was released in 1999, it was by far the most powerful system on the market. Now, this little innovative powerhouse housed a 200 megahertz processor. Now, that's sort of funny looking at the processor speeds now with the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. But at the time, the, more, the most powerful gaming system up until then was the Nintendo 64, and that had a 97 megahertz processor. So this was double the speed, but it also had a CD-ROM drive for games. Now, CD-ROM drive is what it was referred to as, but in fact, this was a GD-ROM drive. Gigadisks is what the Dreamcast actually used. So the games could hold a little bit more storage than the standard CD, but was well below the DVD storage capacity that later came out in the PlayStation 2. Now, if you look on the back of the Dreamcast, you notice that it actually has a phone cord, and this is for the modem that was built into the system. Now, this built-in modem let you play games online via dial-up. Now, I know most people think that dial-up isn't something you want to play online games with, and truth be told, it isn't, but the games were so well-coded, and Sega's network was so solid and consistent that it actually wasn't too bad at all. Now, the Dreamcast was also the first gaming system to allow PC players to play console players in a game. And Sega did that way back in 2000 when they released Quake 3 Arena for the Sega Dreamcast. Now, another feature that the Sega Dreamcast had that put it sort of ahead of its time was the fact that you could web browse on the system. Now, the web browsing could be done with the mouse and keyboard peripherals to try to duplicate the PC experience, and it used a variation of the Netscape type browser. Now, one of the incredible things about the the Sega Dreamcast controller was the inclusion of a memory unit that went right into the controller. But this wasn't just any memory unit. This memory unit actually did more than just save games. It also itself was a standalone gaming system. This was referred to as the VMU, the Virtual Memory Unit. Now, as you can see here, it has its own control pad and buttons, and it would use a watch battery in order to power the device. Now what you would do is you would have games that would download from various Dreamcast titles, and they would download mini games to the VMU that you could play on the road. So not only did it serve as a memory card, but it also served as a portable gaming system. One of the other incredible things about this is that it was one of the first um, controllers to have an analog stick, and it was also one of the first controllers to incorporate triggers as the L and R buttons. 